Hey everyone, how you doing? So for this video, I'm kind of just going to go over how I make my reblades out of solid pieces of steel. So it would look like this. I'll, I'll just put a picture on the screen. Um, switching cameras is kind of a pain. It's not a very complicated process. I'll go over how I make them and how I machine them. Uh, just going to be a quick overview. What's going to be involved in this is choosing the material, prepping the material, cutting the material to size, um, machining the material, getting the material ready for heat treat, for hardening and tempering, um, and then uh, surface grinding to final dimensions, and then finishing and stuff like that. Um, it's a lot to go over. It won't be one video. This might be part one of a couple parts. Um, I'm also trying to get all these done this week, so I'll probably film everything and then it'll come out over the next couple weeks. Enjoy. The material that I chose for my replates is CPM S35 VN steel. Part of the reason that I chose this material is that it is one of the easier super steels to work with and due to its popularity, it is not nearly as expensive as some other similar options. Its toughness and ballast on blades is also really important because it helps the blades to take a beating without chipping or cracking. Okay, so to start with the machining, um, we have one in here. This is what it looks like um, after the first op has been machined. Only one side has been machined. So, like this. This is the material I prefer to use. I ordered more material and they sent it oversized. For what I'm doing with this, it's not a problem, but it could be a problem. So make sure when buying with your steel supplier, be sure to clarify that it has to be this size. Okay, so this is what it looks like while it's in the mill. I'm just gonna go over real quick what's doing what while I'm machining, and I'll put feeds and speeds up on screen for those of you who want to use those. So I'm cutting S35VN non-hardened. This is soft steel. Um, I'm not sure what the Rockwell is on it, but it's not hardened. I'm not sure. Okay, so the first stop I do is I face it. You'll see it on a time lapse in a minute. I use a quarter inch end mill and I just face the whole thing. I find it makes things a lot easier for the second operation. Um, okay, so then I come in with a 3 16th um, end mill and I do all the slotting, feeds and speeds again, um, and I also take these. Then I come in with a quarter inch reamer, I ream these holes to size, um, I then use an eighth inch end mill to go around the perimeter, remove all the extra stock and punch through the bottom. I then use that same eighth inch end mill to cut the bevels you can see it's a very nice bevel. And then I use a chamfer end mill to come in and chamfer all these edges. Okay, so here's the blade finished. I am now gonna run the rest of them 
um, and just really not show much of that because it takes a lot of time to film and stuff. So I'm just going to get the rest of them run. And then when I'm done with all the op ones, which I have four more blades left, um, I'll then go into op two and tell you guys how I do it. Okay, so I just got all the op ones finished. Um, basically with these bigger ones, it left a slight burr uh, on that edge and that has to come off. So I'm gonna take that burr off real quick with the belt grinder and then I'll get on to setting up op two. Okay, so I've gotten all of these done and deburred. So now it's time to move on to op two. Okay, so now that the problem in the machine, we're going to reference off of this hole. Okay, so now that the blade's in there and everything's referenced, the program is ready to run, and I'm gonna cut to a time lapse. So there you go. Okay, so I just started the machine and I was getting ready for the time lapse to go, and something weird happened that I've never had happen with this machine. I've had it happen with older machines, my older Tormach, um, my 440, but never this one. So I did the tool change and it went to grab this and the tool fell out of the tool changer, which has never happened before. Um, I'm pretty sure I got it on the time-lapse camera. We'll see, but basically I went to pick it up, picked it up and it dropped it right on top of the tool probe. Somehow it didn't set it off and stop it because it always does that. Yeah, you can see right there, tool setter input changed during a job, but the machine continued and tried to machine it. Um, thankfully I was here to watch it and stop it. So I'm assuming it's a, something got loose up in here. And so I'm going to mess with that. why I don't use that. It's terrible. <laughs> Ooh. 
Okay, so hopefully you heard that in the video before the air compressor kicked on, but what had happened is I went to change tools when I opened the collet, there is this really loud leaking noise with the air, which is not supposed to happen. So um, yeah, I need to figure out where that is. Okay, I think I fixed it. I think it was just a loose fitting up here. So now we're going to try it. Okay, that seems to have worked. I'm gonna change a couple more tools to make sure that that was actually it, and then get on with it. Okay, so the tool changer is now fixed. It was as simple as tightening that little screw up there. So uh, thankfully that fixed it, and I just tool changed the entire tray. Everything went perfectly. So. Time to finally start machining. <laughs> Okay, so the blade just finished machining. And so now, I have two sides. So now I just need to run the other 10. I am not gonna film or time lapse that because this video is already gonna be way too long. Um, so I guess once I'm done with them, I'll give some finishing remarks and that'll be it. It'll be, um, it'll be the end of the video and then I'll go over heat treating and stuff in the next one. Okay. So I'm midway through a little more than halfway through all my op twos. And I wanted to quickly mention how tool, tool wear will manifest specifically on the bevels. So you see this one side, this was cut with a fresh tool. This is one of the first blades that was cut and it has really nice bubble finish. You flip it over and you'll see this big old nasty burr and you'll see slightly, and you see the bevels aren't quite as nice. Um, I do have a picture of this, like a side by side. And so I'll insert that here, but this is kind of how tool wear manifests. Just got all the op twos done. So they're all looking pretty nice. So that is going to be it for this video. I'm going to throw some pictures of them up at the end of this. Thank you guys for watching.